This is problem number three for the statics final exam, spring 2012. And this problem is a classic boom and strut problem where we have a beam, or boom in this case specifically, hanging out over its supporting strut which is member BC. So a beam has loading in at least three places, in this case A, B, and D. And the strut only has loading in two locations, C and B. The strut uh, therefore has its forces aligned with the geometry of the member. So we'll use that in a little bit. The setup here shows one and a half meter height from A to C, from A to B is 0.8 meters, and from B to D is 0.6 meters. We removed the supports at A and C, they were both pinned, so we, we replaced them with red arrows. This one will be AY and AX. Here we'll have a force at C in the Y direction and a force at C in the X direction. In order to calculate the reactions at CX and AX, we can take the moments about A and C. So, sum the moments about point A, they have to equal zero. Now, uh, any of the A forces go right through point A, multiplied by zero, because there's no distance, we can ignore them. Likewise with CY, CY goes right through point A, it has zero moment arms, so we'll ignore that. The only two forces we need to deal with are 50 kilonewtons and CX. The forces at point B are internal and have no effect on the entire system. So we have absolute value of 50 kilonewtons times 0 0.6, 0 0.8 is 1.4 meters. and 50 kilonewtons is going in a clockwise direction like that around point A so it is negative CX we're assuming is going to the right so CX times 1.5 meters since it's going to the right it's so going in this direction around point A, which gives us a counterclockwise moment. It will be positive. Solving for CX. Get 46 and two-thirds kilonewtons. If we take the moments about point C with very similar mathematics, Now, as we take the points about point C, CX, CY, and AY all go through point C, so they'd be multiplied by zero. 
whereas AX does not go through point C, so we are assuming that it's going to the right, and we'll have a clockwise rotation, and so it will also be negative. We'll find out later that AX actually is going to the left. Obviously, if we do a check, we sum the forces in the x direction, they must equal zero. The only ones we have are ax and cx, and as we can see, they add up to zero. As we stated before, the forces in the strut BC go in the same direction as the geometry of BC. So we can say that CX over CY is the same ratio as the distance from B to C in the X direction over the distance from B to C in the Y direction. Well, if we rearrange that equation, CY equals CX times D BCY over D BCX and we have 46 and two-thirds kilonewtons times 1.5 meters over 0 0.8 meters. These are actually minus signs, but they cancel out one on top of the other. And CY is 87.5 kilonewtons. The problem is asking for simply the total force at joint C. So our last step is to calculate that. Total force is simply CX squared plus CY squared. Take the square root of that and we end up with 99.2 kilonewtons. If we want to find the angle, then we take the inverse tangent of CY over CX, and we get 61.9 degrees. All that's left now is to check our answer. And we can do that by looking at A, B, D. And we'll plug in these forces here. A, Y. AX, BY, BX, and of course simply the load at D down. Dimensions here again are 0 0.8 meters, 0 0.6 meters.
this calculation should start with taking the moments of up point A, they have to equal zero, and we'll end up with BY being 87.5 kilonewtons. Then all we need to do is recognize that the free body diagram of BC BY down as negative 87.5 kilonewtons and CY will, well, based on some of the forces in the Y direction, equal to zero. CY will be positive 87.5 kilonewtons just as we had over here and if we do the uh, slope technique again that we used here then uh, we will find CX uh, also back equal to 46 and two-thirds kilonewtons so that checks out.